First giving honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the head of my life. When I think about where he's brought me from, when I think about the wife he blessed me with, when I think about my beautiful daughters he blessed me with, when I think about the job he gave me with no degrees, when it called for a master's degree and a bachelor's degree and being the chief of animal control for 20 years, when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. See, I, I can't tell you your story, but I can tell you what he's done for me. And I know he's done something for you too. But just the other day when I saw my daughter, he blessed her with the be the varsity high school softball coach at Gwent Park High School. And when I pulled up the practice, running a little late, and she looked at me like she was going to fire me, but I made it in there anyhow. And when I saw my daughter, had all the girls sitting around her, and when I got there, she was talking about a man named Jesus. Good God. Woo! Lord, have mercy. Uh, come on, somebody. Uh, uh, woo! Let, let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Excuse me, I ain't got my mess, but let me tell you why. You see, she has a, a bachelor's degree in psychology counseling, and one thing I told her is she's a coach from the heart, and I said, it's all going to work together. See, it's more than just coaching. Those kids are going to go through some things, and you got to be able to counsel them. You got to be able to speak to their hearts and tell them some good news because they're going to go through some things. And watch this, watch this. One of our pitchers on our team, her mother, in the midst of a game, had just got to the game and sat down in the chair and within five minutes was having a massive stroke right at the game. Coach Taylor, Coach Taylor, it's an emergency. We called 911. We had to get her. She got the Southern Road. They helicoptered her straight to Georgetown. And y'all keep her in prayer, Sister April Proctor. Keep her in prayer because God still got to finish healing her body. She's going through. And that's just one child. Now, that's the pitch on the team. Then we get a call the other day. She says, Daddy, she says, uh, one of the players' brother was just shot and killed. 26 years old. And they trying to figure it out. These young ladies don't know what to do. But when I walked up and I heard the name Jesus, God Almighty, woo! See, she could have been talking about a whole lot of other stuff, but she was talking about Jesus. And the young girl said, what does it mean to be saved? Cook God from Zion. Woo! Lord, have mercy. Oh, I, I got to get to my message, y'all, but let me tell you something. Sweetheart, Daddy is proud of you. And I'm going to say it on the mic. Daddy is real proud of you. You keep on letting the Lord use you in a mighty way. He's going to take you places you've never been before. You just keep on letting him use you in a mighty way. Oh, Jesus. And I just remember that day, y'all, when I preached a sermon right at this pulpit. And she gave her life to the Lord. She gave her life to the Lord. And look what the Lord is doing for her now. God is good. I'm telling you, I, I'm not going to say no more this generation is lost. Because the generation ain't lost. Because let me tell you something. It's on us to put it in. We got to go back and get our generations. Hallelujah. But God is good and worthy to be praised. I thank God for my beautiful wife, Raynette Taylor, the mother of all mothers. As I'm in ministry and school and gospel and all over, she's there holding down the foot. And I thank God for her. I truly do. I truly do. If we heard our Bibles with us today, I want to turn to Luke 19. We have our Bibles this morning with us. Let's turn to Luke 19. And we're just going to read verses 1 through 10. Verses 1 through 10. It's time for a change, y'all. It's time for a change. Amen. Luke 19, verse 1 through 10. And I'm sure my baby girl, Raylia, may be live streaming. So I love you, darling. Daddy love you, too. Daddy love you, too. Let me fix that up right now because I do have to go home. I do have to go home. And we thank God for her because she'll be graduating from the University of Maryland on May the 21st with her bachelor's degree. 
criminal justice pre-law and on her way to law school. So we thank God for her. We thank God for her as well. We thank God. Amen, amen, amen. So Luke 19, 1 through 10, and it reads, And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he, he was, and could not for the press, because he was little in statue. And when he ran before and climbed into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste, come down, for today I must abide in thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully, and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying, that he was gone to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusations, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. For so much as he also is the son of Abraham, for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which is lost. That which is lost. If I had to put a title to this message this morning, it's going to be, there has been a change. There has been a change. There has been a change. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Oh, God, we bless your name this morning. God, you've been good. You've been wonderful. You've been marvelous. God, you've blessed this house. You've blessed this house called Union Bethel AME Church. And we thank you. God, your presence is already here. God, speak now, for your servant hears your voice. Whichever way you want to go, Jesus, you move and let your Holy Ghost move me. I thank you. I bless you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Again, there has been a change. To finance their great world empire, the Romans levy heavy taxes on all nations under their control. The, Drew, the Jews opposed these taxes because they supported a secular government and its pagan gods, but they were still forced to pay. Tax collectors were among the most unpopular people in Israel. I mean, so they also like that in Brandywine, too. Come on now. Nobody trying to play tax. Jews by birth, they chose to work for Rome and were considered traitors, and were considered traitors. Besides, it was common knowledge that tax collectors were making themselves rich by gorging their fellow Jews. Mm, my, 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 my. It was no wonder the people murmured when Jesus went home with the tax collector Zacchaeus. There is somebody here today that Jesus want to go home with. But despite the fact that Zacchaeus was both a cheater and a turncoat, this is the part I love, Jesus still loved him. Jesus still loved him. No matter what your situation is, ha, I come to let you know that Jesus still loves you. Jesus still loves you. Somebody is saying right now, not me. Preacher man, not me. I'm not worthy. My sins are just too bad. But Jesus is saying, just come to me just as you are. Just as you are. I will change your life forever. Forever. You will never be the same. I'm going to live, I'm, I'm, I'm a living witness what God can do. I'm a living witness what God can do. And I know we got some witnesses out here what God can do. There has been a change in some folks' lives in here today. There has been a change. And we're going to talk about the change. Do I have a witness? Do I have a witness? Watch this. In response to Jesus loving Zacchaeus, the little tax collector was converted. He was converted just from love. Today, I come to tell every Christian in the house this morning, under the sound of my voice, we got to love the sinner. We can't hit him over the head with the sludge hammer. We can't go around acting like we the best thing that ever walked on, on water. Because guess what? We were there ourselves, and guess what? We've all sinned, sinned and fallen short of his glory. God is saying today, we must go just the way Jesus loves Zacchaeus. We got to do the same thing and bring him into the house of God. 
and God will do the rest. He was converted just by love that Jesus showed him. In every society, certain groups of people are considered untouchable because of their political views, their immoral behavior, or their lifestyle. We got somebody sitting in a big old house over there, and that's who God is talking about today. But watch this. I would not care what his name is. It may be Trump. It doesn't matter. We got control of the White House because the Bible says the prayers of the righteous avail of much. We can pray the White House right if we only just believe. I believe God is telling the church right now, as he told our Adam, Adam, where art thou? God is saying to the church, church, where art thou? When they're up there passing them crazy laws, the churches need to get back out there on the streets and get back in front of the White House and let them know we're not going to stand for that. There's power in numbers. There's power in numbers. And God is telling us that right now. We should not give in to social pressures to avoid these people. We can't just accept anything, y'all. We can't accept anything. We can't let them sit in D.C. and talk about they're going to pass uh, uh, laws that let our children smoke marijuana. We can't just settle for anything. I told somebody the other day, it ain't even the kids that want to pass marijuana. Those are 50 and 60 and 70 year old folks that want to go back and smoke weed again. That's who passing the laws, and it's going to affect our children. Just watch TV and you'll see what I'm talking about. It ain't alcohol, even I'm going to tell you that right now. But they want to go back to the 60s and 70s. But God's saying, not today. We got to get back out there and tell them, no, stop. See my kid in college, my grandkid in college trying to pass a test smoking marijuana? It ain't going to work. Come on, we got some witnesses in here. You can put your hand up just a little bit. We know what it'll do to you. Come on now, we can't go there. So we can't give in to social, social pressures to avoid these people. Jesus loved and they need to hear the good news. They got to hear the good news. They got to hear the good news. Judging from the crowd's reaction to him, Zacchaeus must have been a very crooked tax collector. Because the people was like, oh my God, Jesus going with him? He's the worst one out there. But how many know that's who Jesus looked for? Good God Almighty. When he found us, God, when he found us, we were Zacchaeus, y'all. We was in the worst situation we could be in, a whole lot of us. And he reached down and picked us up. He picked us up and took us out of that situation. Lord, have mercy. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be honest, testify. I didn't know how I'm going to get off of alcohol. Just drinking and sociably drinking. But go watch this. Watch what sociably drinking do to you. Sooner or later you say, I want to give it up. And you find yourself going right back. You find yourself going right back. God said, oh, no. Love them on through. Love them on through, Jesus. Love them on through. But after he met Jesus, Lord, have mercy, he realized that his life needed to be straightened out. You see, Zacchaeus demonstrated inward change by outward reaction. Inward change by outward actions. That means he showed the people the change in his life. He showed the people, I'm just going to be converted. Those folks looked at him and, and said, you're the worst thing to ever live. And he said, I'm going to find Jesus any means necessary. I'm going to find Jesus. If you read the word, it said he climbed up in a sycamore tree. Good God Almighty, because he was a short man. He couldn't even see him, but he got up in a sycamore tree. It's time for somebody to get in that sycamore tree. Good God from Zion, find your tree. Good God Almighty, find your tree. Wherever your tree is, find it. It's not enough to follow Jesus in your head and in your heart alone. You must show faith by changed behavior. Yeah. It's time to change the behavior now. Folks got to see Christians, but, and they got to see them coming from a distance. They can't think about it. They can't, it ain't just the heart and the head, but now this behavior change. We got to live for this man. Don't be afraid to wave your hands when, when you're feeling. Don't be afraid to get your shot. Don't be afraid to let him know how much you love him. Good God from Zion. Somebody's looking for a blessing. God's saying right now, just give me a little praise. I guarantee you, if you praise me, I word. If you praise me, I word. I'm going to bless you like never before. Just give me a little praise, and I'm going to bless you like never before. You see, there's been a change. I don't walk the same way. I don't talk the same way. There's been a change in my life. And his name is Jesus. There's been a great change in my heart. There's been a great change in my heart. You see, I went to the water one day, y'all, and I got baptized. 
Good God from Zion. When I came out of that water, I came out shouting. I came out shouting. Didn't understand what was going on. But Lord, have mercy. And when the Holy Ghost got a hold of me, whoo, Lord, have mercy. I've been shouting ever since because God's been just that good to me. Every time I think about the goodness of Jesus, Lord, have mercy. My heart just bubbles over. Jeremiah said it right. He said it's like fire shut up in my bones. I just can't help myself. There has been a change that came over my life. Do I have a witness in here this morning? Has there been a change in your life? Has there been a change in your life? Woo, when I looked at my hands, y'all, they look new. When I looked at my feet, they did too. Good God, I couldn't help myself. Oh my God, hallelujah. Ah, I can't stop praising my God this morning. I can't stop praising my God this morning. There has been a change. There has been a change in my life. I just can't stop praising his name. You see, people are not saved by doing good deeds or even condemned by doing bad ones. Faith is the most important thing. Faith, you got to believe. The Bible says it's like a mystery. But when that mystery of Jesus opened up to you, and you start believing this thing is real. Somebody needs to hear this this morning. You're wondering, is this really real? I hear him keep talking about this. Jesus, is it really real? I wasn't born in it. I don't understand it. My, I, I was born a certain religion. They didn't speak about it. But now I'm of an older age, and I'm still wondering about this Jesus. Is it real? It's a mystery to those that don't believe. But when you just make up your mind, I'm going to try Jesus. I'm going to try him and watch what he does in your life. Watch what he does. Jesus still loves to bring the lost into his kingdom. No matter what their background or previous way of life. That's the point we got to take home with us today. I don't care what your previous way of life was, how bad it was, how you feel so unworthy. You feel so unworthy. Jesus came to save your soul. And when he gets in your life, your life will never, ever be the same. Come on, can I have a witness out there? Do I have a witness out there? When he came into your life, your life was never, ever the same. It was never, ever the same. It doesn't matter the background. Through faith, the loss can be forgiven and made new. There has been a change in my life. There's been a change in my life. And I'm going to tell you, just a little story about my grandfather, Reverend Crump said it just a little earlier, the elder Francis Taylor. We was young men working around. He was a carpenter. We was working around him as a carpenter. And you know what he did? He was nothing. All he was doing is whistling songs like, I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses. Then he would whisper another little song to us, and he would say, Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Next thing I know, he said, this is my Savior. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Me and my brother look at, look at each other and say, man, what is he? What's, go, what's going on here? We couldn't understand it. Then he had a sign on the side of his truck. And he was, he had, the, the scripture was Acts talking about the Holy Ghost. And he was preaching the Holy Ghost as he was driving through Southeast. It is something about the gift of the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost get inside of you, there's fire shut up in your bones. You can't just help yourself. Your life will change forever. And I said, my brother, what is this Holy Ghost thing is all about? What is it all about? But about 14 or 15 years old, when Jesus came into my heart, Lord, have mercy. And all of a sudden, I thought of saying, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And I remember about 19, going out, because you know how we do. We get 16, we get too big for our britches, so we leave church. Oh, we run on back out there. But when I went out there, that world beat me up enough, beat us up enough, didn't it? And it brought us back to the house of God. But when I came back to the house of God, this time when I came back, there was a, something a little different about this time. When I walked through the doors of the church, my eyes were full of tears. Tears was running down my face. I didn't understand what was going on. This old lady came to me and said, son, your life is being purged right now. God is emptying you out right now to fill you back up with the gift of the Holy Ghost. And now all of a sudden, this old man come and laid hands on me and preached on my heart. Lord have mercy. And I got to shouting and running through that church. I just remember the day I couldn't stop running. God is saying today, God is saying today, I'm real. There has been a change. There has been a change. 
God wants to change your life forever. Young people, you don't have to wait until you get older. Do it now, because watch this, and I believe this in my spirit so strongly. The devil is so busy. Every young person that comes to Jesus now, he's going to bless them mightily real fast. Why he's going to do it? Because he's going to let the other ones know, I'm real. That devil is lying. I'm real. I'm real. I'm real. Young man, right here, God is saying, brother, let me tell you something. God has given you a spirit that's going to exemplify on the football field. God is going to use you like never before, my brother. When I tell you scholarships are going to come and they're going to flow like living water, you'll be able to make a decision where you want to go. You'll have them laid out on the table and you'll say, I'm going this place right here. Why? Because you're in the house of God. You stay in the house of God. Don't you let nobody, I don't care how crazy the parties may seem, you stay in the house of God. God's going to take care of you. He's going to take care of you, my brother. And then watch this. You might still walk, you make your way to the party. I did too. But when God got a hold of me, I never forget the day I was in there. Somebody remember the Oak Tree Lounge. Somebody got to remember the Oak Tree Lounge. And watch this. I walked in the door. God was already in my life. I met my wife in there too. We ain't been back since. Good God from Zion. Whoa! Good God Almighty. But watch this here. I walked in the place. Yes, sir. I walked in the place. And when I looked around, all the people looked like monsters to me. I looked around. I said, good God Almighty, what the world am I doing in here? God was dealing with my heart. He was dealing with my spirit. I had to get out of there and run. And when I got back to my house, y'all, I fell on my knees. And I said, Lord, I know you're real. I know you're real. I need that change in my life. I need that change in my life. And God is saying today, there has been a change. There has been a change. The people need to see the glory of God. They need to see the glory of God in your life. Because we can save this dying world. We're in peerless times now. We're in the last days. But God is saying today, there has been a change. All you got to do now is walk into your change. Let folks know that God is real in your life. And you don't mind telling somebody how it really is. When I go to work, when I walk in the building on any, any given day, I can walk in the building and they know I'll come up in there singing God praises. He's been really good to me. I'll sing my song walking. They say, there go the chief. I'll just sing my song walking to my office. And you watch this though. Believe it or not, there's some people don't understand. They're going to talk about it. But there's other folks that are going to go just like this. Knock, knock. Chief, I need to have a word with you. Huh? Chief, I need to have a word with you. Why? Because there's a need for Christians now to love folks and let them know that God can change their life forever. There has been a change. There has been a change. God bless you. We love you. God bless you.